we'll have uh, a couple people to answer, answer these questions. So the first question is, Alaska is a big state. How do you determine where to bear bait? So Trevor is up. I drive as far from people as I possibly can. <laughs> So I, I look for places that there's not other people. I think that gives you better luck bear baiting. Um, you might have a different answer. People that bait on the peninsula, you're just naturally going to be around a lot of people. Um, but I just look for places where either by drive time or fly or some way of creating barriers where it annoys people or there's some kind of barrier to where it's not easy for somebody else to do it. Whether you're walking in a mile off the road instead of putting it right as close as you possibly can. Um, just something to get you away from other people and still find those funnels or rigid lines and stuff that'll help you get your scent out there and have bears find your bait. Because in the first place you gotta find is a good place for bears, but I just try to avoid people as best I can. Yeah, and that's a good answer. I think everyone would agree with that. Other than, you know, hunting pressure is building in Alaska. So Alaska is so big and so small at the same time. And you know, you're sitting there and you, you have a bait that's been in for a decade. Oh, sorry, for a decade, and then, you know, some guy throws his bait in, you know, 50 yards from you. So that, that definitely a plus. Another one, and I'm sure we all have different factors. One other way is water, right? You need a water access. Do you need your bait right on the water? No, no. But uh, a bear is going to need water, so the farther you are from water source, right, is the, it's, it adds time to that bear's travels because that bear is traveling around different baits. If you think you have the only bait within miles, you're wrong. Right, so you don't have to be on a river or a lake, but it's it's good if you can, and and then you may do with where you can hunt. So. Uh, I'll do exactly what he said and say natural water sources are very important. Uh, the bears are going to stick to them. Also, natural uh, corridors or funnels and valleys or mountains uh, is what you want to pay attention to. Bears like thick terrain, so don't put it out in a field. That's a general thing that people always do is they put it right smack dab in the middle of the field. So next to thick brush, the bears feel more comfortable. Uh, so keep it in that kind of area. Running water, also the advantage that is there is you're gonna make noise getting into your bait, sitting on your bait, whatever you're doing. So when you're on your bait, if you have a natural water source that's making noise, it kind of hides your noise. <coughs> so always look for that. And then also, if you think one step further, so their natural resource and natural food, you're gonna have berries in the mountains, so they're there in the fall. You're gonna have fish in the fall, and those bears den up high, the brown bears den higher up in the mountains. The black bears a little bit lower, they den in the trees. But those bears are going to pop their dens and then they're going to head for say a stream that's got frozen salmon in it or something some kind of food source there uh, skunk cabbage in the spring is one of bears favorite um, foods to go after that's natural so try to be in that relative area uh, you're also going to look for signs so you're going to look for scratch trees where the bear is rubbing its back you'll find hair like he was talking about um, you'll find scratch trees where they scratch with their claws. You'll find, of course, tracks and um, any kind of poop, uh, simply put. Um, and that's, that's pretty much how I find areas, is I look for those kind of things. Thank you, guys. Pretty much got it covered. The only thing I could, might add is that when we were doing some of our snaring along on one stream, obviously we did use the stream to, to mask our scent and our sound coming in. But I was really struck by Laverne, who he, he learned to snare from a, that guy named Aldrich that developed the spring. So Laverne has tons of experience. We walked in maybe a half mile or so, and he said, oh, this is, this is black bear country now. And there was a, a shift, and we had a lot more trees. It was a lot higher. You started looking around, and you could see while there were still bear trails, there was a lot more black bear hair than there was brown bear hair that had been left. And it turned out later in the year, we didn't know it at the time, but when the fish showed up, the fish didn't really get that far up. And so the black bears were pushing the envelope next to the brown bears, if you will, without getting in their face too much because it could be detrimental to them, but they were both using the same area. So look around and think like uh, basically a bear and see what you can see relative to what's fair for you to use. All right, thanks guys. Uh, the next question is, once you determine where to bait, bear bait, how do you set up your stand? Are you using barrels? Are you putting the food on the ground? Are you using tree stands, ground blinds? 
Uh, where do you put the burrow in relationship to your stand? You pay attention to the wind. Those sorts of questions. Ron, we'll start with you first. If you want. So one of the things that I've, I have found over the years at different people's sites um, and my site is if you do have competition, the closer you get to a mountain base or even up the mountain a little ways, the better success you're gonna have to be, right? Because as he said, you have competition with other hunters. For some reason, the closer it is to the mountain, the better it has seemed to work for me. That said, when you are close to the mountain, you wanna think about the thermals. So thermals follow the sun is the best way I say it. As the sun heats the earth, it's gonna raise, you know, hot air rises, it's gonna raise your thermals. At night, it's gonna set the thermals down. So if you're gonna hunt evenings, which I do, um, his data actually showed bears wake up in the morning, but I'm not a morning person. Um, so I hunt evenings, I sleep during the day during bear season. So at night, I'm gonna put my stand down the mountain from the bait so the thermals are coming down. And if you do set up your bait, you don't have to leave your stand where it is. Put the extra effort in. If you notice the winds one direction for a couple weeks in a row, Generally, it's going to be there unless the storm front moves it the other way. So, I mean, use your brain. If, if your scent's blowing towards your bait, bears are going to be less apt to come in. Um, so always try to move your stand if that is necessary. Um, the other thing that I also pay attention to, you'll see it up in these slides, is you don't want to skyline yourself on a bait. So that's if a bear's looking up into the trees, if you all have all sky behind you, you're going to be easy to see. Uh, another mistake that I've seen is people put their stand directly over a bait or within plain sight. I mean, bears aren't there, they look around. So if you have a little bit of movement, those bears are gonna see you. Uh, try to brush it back or stay back in the trees. I use a little uh, burlap sack in front of me and I put a little bit of the natural vegetation strung in it. It just hides your movement, it hides you in the tree. Um, bears are very quiet. If you haven't bear baited yet, you'll know that. So you're gonna move when the bears are there. You're gonna have no idea that they're there. So just a couple tips. Yeah, that, that's uh, very good. I mean, they're silent. It's amazing, 400 pound animal comes in and, and you don't hear it at all until it pops up at your bait. Um, and and uh, another point is there's lots of different stands, right? There's ladder stands, there's climbing stands, there's hanging on stands. People hunt from ground blinds. So it's all your preference. Um, but what we typically do, and I say we, my sons and I, we usually run about six baits a season. And uh, what we'll do is set up for a rifle shot or a long bow shot. My sons are much better with the bow than I am. And we'll set about 40 or 50 yards. And then when it's time like this season, I'm gonna try with my long bow. I'm excited about that. And so we'll let the bears come in and acclimate at whatever I set, 40 yards. And then when I'm ready to hunt with my long bow, I'll set another bait really strong scent, like you know, a Batum 907 scent, really strong at about 18 or, or 20 yards, and just for the time I'm there. And we'll sit it there, and the bears will come in, and they'll go to the bait, and then they'll realize, hey, something's new, and they'll come in close. And so you don't have to set up various stands. You can alter the behavior of the bear once you get them acclimated to your site. So I set up for comfort for myself. I hunt long hours and I hunt at night, so I typically do a big double ladder stand um, if I have the gumption to actually hump it all the way in there. Um, usually try to recruit friends to help me get stuff in, but um, the more comfortable you are, the longer you'll sit. I bring in very large, very comfortable setups, and I typically hunt like six, eight hours at a time and just sit there all night. because. Um, you can pattern bears as well as you want to, but a lot of times they pattern you too. And so um, it's like clockwork a lot of times. If you're notorious for leaving the stand at midnight, you'll start getting bears coming in at 12, 15, and they'll just hang out and wait for you to leave before they come in. So um, I think hunting a long time at night is a big plus. Definitely comfort for me is big because I want to sit there for a long time. Next question is, uh, so when you bait, I think of baiting as kind of two factors. One is you have to have a scent to get the bears to come in. And then the second thing is you have to have a food source there. So I'd like to hear what these guys uh, use for scent and also a food source. And uh, where's Jess at from Bait on 907? So Jess is in the back in the yellow. Wave your hand. And uh, Jess, we thank you for all your great products and, uh, and for serving in Alaska. So if you guys have any questions about what she offers, she's back in the back. And she also donated lots of gold prizes, which we'll draw out uh, here in an hour or so. So I think for any bear baits, 
in my opinion, and some people disagree, I think scent is the only thing that matters. You, you have to have food. They're not going to keep coming back if you don't have some kind of food for them to eat. Um, but just dumping out dog food in the woods is not going to get you a consistent bear bait. Um, they have to smell it from a long way off. And once they find your bait, if you have ample food, they're going to keep coming back once they found it. But they got to get there first. So um, I supplement a lot of my baits with popcorn as far as food goes because I'm cheap and you can pop it yourself for pretty cheap if you can sit there and do it for hours and hours and hours and hours on end. Um, dog food's the easiest, but dog food can rack up a bill as much as a mortgage <laughs> some during the spring. So um, you just gotta weigh how often you're baiting, how long true. your season is. That's like true. I bait for a month and a half and we run, like you said, four to six baits. So I don't think what's in your barrel matters near as much as what it smells like, personally. <laughs> and I get it, yeah, I, I agree 100%. You know, I, I, uh, I use dog food. I, I try to stay cheap as well. And I have a connection with the local movie theater. So, you know, come Monday morning, they give me their giant leftover bags of popcorn. So, and then I hit the, the Chinese restaurant. So right now I have 100 gallons I've saved up of fry grease out of the fryers. Uh, so I, I stay cheap. And then I supplement with dog food as cheap as I can get. But I'm, I'm all about the scent as well. And uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to boost uh, Batum 907. I'm not a paid spokesman, but I, I tell you, I've had this, you know, we all, we all gravitate towards this, you know, we'll find a good spot and we'll keep going there and then we'll, we'll branch out and try other spots. But I've got a place, this is my 11th season in that spot. In the first eight years, um, it, just where it is genetically, the bears were smaller. And, uh, you know, after that eight years, We've taken quite a few bears and we're pretty particular, but we only had a, two bears in eight years that were over six feet. And, and so maybe a coincidence, but you know, I discovered Batum 907 sprays and I baited heavy with the scent to where I could smell my scent, my baits 75 yards from my stands, which was the first time ever. And last year we took four bears out of that spot from two for the eight years, a 6'6", six, six, a 6'3", six, uh, and two six footers, and they were, I mean, solid six. They weren't stretch, you know, stretch the nose. They were solid six footers. I, I, I tend, I, I think I'm baiting it sometimes just for brown. Like I move my, you know, my baits around and, and I'll do heavy grease and oil and, and uh, the dog food and call it a, a brown bear spot. And I'll have more black bears hit that than ever. And then I'll, I'll have one that's all sweet. I'll have jelly and fruity rubble spray and, and I'll have grizzlies hit it. So, I mean, generally speaking, people who bait for brown or, you know, go with the, the grease, the oils, the, uh, you know, with the dog food and, and some meat. Um, but I get that my personal, my personal experience is I get both. So. so they call them call baits. So call baits are call the bears in from long distances. So when you're first developing a bait, you want to put as much scent on as possible. So I usually use a spray can, put it up in, up in the trees higher. That way your winds are coming, they're taking the scent, right? So you wanna have, not only bait your site, but bait the surrounding area. Cause if it's a, a wind thermal or thermal that gets something higher up the mountain, mountain, it's gonna bring that bear to that area. And then it's gonna bring your bait bear, now that it's in that area, to your bait. So you don't concentrate on one central spot. Spread out, get up in the trees, go into different valleys. I mean, bring them in from different areas. All bears walk the same trail. I mean, once you have a developed site, you'll start to see their footprints are staggered like that. And bear after bear walks that same exact trail, and it's crazy. I mean, you'll have a bear trail all the way up the mountain. You'll get black bears, brown bears, so if you now, if you put honey on that, if you put uh, molasses, any of Batum uh, 907's products, once you start doing that, then that bear is gonna carry the scent up and down every valley, and then the next bear is gonna come that's gonna cross it. So it might not smell your bait or your scent there, but it's gonna smell <coughs> the other bear. What I also do is rub gels um, along trees that are on that bear trail. So that way the bear's gonna come and it's gonna be on it in its bear hide. It's gonna carry the whole way up. I also hang beavers. I, so I get beaver carcasses from trappers and I hang those as high up in the trees as I can. So the wind thermals, all bears love beavers. It, I mean, it's insane. They go nuts. I've had um, a tree that big around literally pushed over by a brown bear. 
I got there and I was like, I know there's brown bears here. Why? Because there's a tree in the middle of the in the middle of the little area that I bait. So it's very important to not only concentrate on your area, but concentrate on the whole entire valley or even other valleys adjacent to it. Um, so that's pretty much all I got, and I think Sean knows how to beat him fairly well. <laughs> and it's very interesting. I like hearing a lot of this. So, um, I can I get access to the things you guys can't use, of course, when I'm baiting too, because I work for the state. Uh, <laughs> but what's really interesting, what's really struck me, listening to you guys, if I had to pinpoint one thing to me that really helps a lot, it's the scent is a biggie. Because when I bait, I'm I'm not trying to get away from everybody else. I'm in your backyard. And I'm competing with your neighbor's barbecue grill. And I'm competing with you know your neighbor's garbage in his pickup truck to get that bear to go inside a tube where he's not going to get fed much at all. <coughs> so we rely on scent an awful lot to do that. And uh, we've had different biologists want to chat. I won't pass on his name, but now he owes me several cameras because when he put out the anise, he didn't take great care with where he touched things. And every single camera that came back from my bait stations, which we had about 10 out, had, was told by the bears because they smelled the anise. So we've started using your product because it's pretty, pretty awesome. I can say that I've not paid for either. And uh, scent just is really big for the bears. And carrying it, like you said, using the, the topography, the ortho, what the ground's doing, that's really critical. Think like a bear. Get out there and see what is going on relative to the bear and what you can do to get that scent for them. The only other thing I throw out, as you'd mentioned, is assimilation or acclimation. And they tune in to your, your patterns. They tune in to the neighbor's patterns so they can go in the backyard. They, they are very, very smart critters. And they will pick up on what you're doing. And if you break that pattern much, you'll throw them off at times. Yeah. On top of that one tip or trick that you can do uh, to kind of trick the bear. If you're going to four wheel into an area or if you're hiking in, take two people and then have the guy leaving make as much noise as possible because that bear's going to think, oh, they're here, they're gone. Um, and, and you'll get bears that way. You got to kind of outsmart them. I mean, they are smart creatures. Um, and on top of that, be careful too, because if you're making a lot of noise and you're going out to get another thing of bait, which I've done before, and you walk back and now you're kind of relaxed yourself, your pistol's kind of holstered, you're not worried about it, well now that bear's like a little bit of an encounter and you're not ready for it. So be careful on that side too, but you do have to outsmart these bears. Uh, people think bears are dumb, they're actually very intelligent. Alright, any other questions <laughs> from the audience? I know. You think they'd be spooked at I, I know. Yeah, go ahead. Do you guys prefer the shaker barrels or mounting your barrel straight to the tree? So I put mine straight to the tree and I actually ratchet strap them instead of chain them um, just because uh, the chains to me eat through barrels uh, even though metal, metal barrel I mean it still chews through them so I actually strap mine to the tree and it does get twisted but I figured if I have three straps on it one just above the hole and one on either side it works better. Um, that as well, instead of them bouncing around on the barrel, it creates a shot opportunity. So I put the barrel and I cut a little, you know, like six inch hole in it. And then I position that so that when the bear's reaching in it, if I'm in the tree stand over here, I want its closest arm to go in so I can see its vitals there because I, I hunt with a bow. So that's kind of how I strategize that is I position the barrel secure in a way that that bear's going to come in. And then after it is a defined, you'll know which way the bears come in and which way they go out. It's, they'll do the same loop every single bear. So once you figure that out, you can reposition the hole. And I just look for maximum shot opportunity is my, my biggest thing. And, and I use both. So I'll use a steel barrel strapped up to the tree and then I'll use a plastic barrel on a chain so they can roll it around. And what I do is I, from keeping it from getting too far out of line, um, I build a little uh, corral behind it. There was a, I think there was a photo up here. Of, I just use old debris, and I make, you know, I make a V fence behind it out of natural debris, so I can, I can position the bears using old fallen trees, or I cut, or you know, when you're clearing your shooting lane, I, I use those and build a barricade, so they have to come around. Um, 
So the, how I tie them off will depend on my schedule personally. So if I have a flexible schedule that spring where I can go bait every four or five days, you know, and you can recheck your bait a lot, um, I put big holes where they can reach a whole entire arm in there. They can scoop out. There's really no restriction to that particular bear on how much they can eat. Um, but they're going to burn through your bait a lot quicker that way. Um, if it's a year where I'm baiting 300 miles away or I'm working, you know, 10 days on and I only get to go every two weeks to bait, um, you want your food to last. So the biggest, in my opinion, one of the biggest no-nos is letting your bait run dry. That's the quickest way to lose bears is like if there's easy food, they're going to stick around. If there's not easy food and the food's gone, they'll hang around a couple days and they're going to lose faith in you and they're going to go find the next one. Um, so. For me, if, I, if I'm baiting where I need to make my bait last, I'll use really small holes. Like you can use it as small as like literally like this um, and put it on a chain or a cable and give it like a four foot lead where they can bat it around like a little pinata or something around the tree. Um, and they have to literally move the barrel every time to just have kernels fall out. Um, your bait will last longer, it frustrates them. You'll have barrels probably destroyed throughout the year, but barrels are cheap in the long run. Um, but it makes your bait last a lot longer, so it gives you time to get back without it running out of food. Um, but what he touched on on the crib thing is a really important thing for just shot placement. So I cut a lot of logs, and I'll make a, I call it a crib, but whatever you want to call it. Basically, you, you're building a log wall, and I make it in a V behind the bait barrels. Because um, you'll notice, especially as it starts to get dark in the middle of the night, bears, if they know you're there, and a lot of times they will, like they'll look right at you, or they've already smelled you before they came in. Um, they'll come in straight behind the barrel, they'll lie down, and they'll literally like reach around the barrel and grab food and just like <laughs> nervously <laughs> eat from behind. So um, you want to prevent them from doing that. You want to force them to give you a shot if they come in. So uh, you build really big, like six, eight, ten logs deep um, on both sides and make a V. So they have to come around in front of your bait barrel and give you a shot in order to get to the food. And your V is going to be absolutely wrecked and destroyed every time you go in on an active <laughs> yeah. bait. You just keep restacking it up throughout the season. I want to throw one more thing out there. Um, when you do first put a bear bait in, don't sit it right away. Put a trail cam up, cram up, and if you see bears coming in, give them a little bit. Let them get acclimated. If you come in right away, that bear's going to spook off. It's going to be hard to get them back. So next, I'd like to take another question. Go ahead. Uh, a little bit different from your perspective, like for you, I know you said you primarily go for brown bears. Mm -hmm. I, I converted to kettle corn because I got a kettle corn machine. It's, it's easy to crank it out immediately and, and uh, molasses, what have you. The area that I hunt, there's a lot of blacks and browns. And so I'm curious on your opinions on preferable bait for your, your species. What I started learning is, is popcorn is extremely easy with the, the sweet flavors for black bears, but if I want to dig into brown bears, it's dog dog food and molasses, the heavier grease. I used cob from Alaska Mill and Feed for a while, and it was funny because nobody really liked it at one location, the other location, that's all they'd eat. So I'm just curious if you've experimented with that, and even though I know every area is different, just kind of your thoughts on that. Yeah, I, I go back to the sweet and meat, uh, but again, I've got a very different setup than you, than you guys do. It's just that maybe it's the city bears, um, uh, I don't know. Uh, on the Kenai, when I've uh, snared and when I have put barrel traps on the streams, we're only going for brown bears on that, and, and the black bears were incidental. In the city, maybe because we are competing with so many different scents that are out there, really strong sweet and the blacks. Then the, the brown bears go for the, the meat, but it could be very different out in the, the field for what you guys have. So one thing that I, I have done personally and that I, I figured it works for black bears um, is I'll stop by Walmart or Fred Meyers and I grab a rotisserie chicken. I eat it on the way down, one, it's dinner, and then two, I leave the spares out for the bears. I've had brown bears go to it, but black bears go absolutely nuts. Like crazy on rotisserie chicken, I don't know what it is, but the black bear will come in right to that. Brown bears, um, I always chuck beavers in the trees, and the black bears sniff it, they're down, and they're eating something else. Brown bears love beavers, same kind of thing. I don't know what it is, they go crazy over it. The one thing, that always stuck to me though was the rotisserie chicken. 
And a comment on the Beaver. Yeah, I don't have access to Beavers like, like Ryan does. Now, I've used the other product, which just smells like anise, but they say it's Beaver, Castor, or whatever. I, I don't have the same luck. It doesn't seem to draw, for me at, at least, where I, I hunt. You know, how do you determine the size of the bear? I was just thinking of the barrel. We mentioned that briefly. I'm off topic, I think. But is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Um, you know, I use general, again, hunter's math. So, you know, most of us hunt with barrels. Not everyone does. Uh, but if you hunt with a barrel, you know, a 55-gallon drum, an average one, is, is measures about 34 inches tall. And so if you pick a bear, just you say six foot, and that's, that's an arbitrary number. It's up to you what size bear you want to take. Uh, you know, but six foot. A six-foot bear standing on all fours, right, against a, a barrel, right? If his shoulders and back are at or above that barrel, he's a six-footer, roughly. You know, he's 5'11", or he's 6'1", but, you know, the bigger above he is. And the same with a barrel laying down, right? A, a, a barrel on its side is 24 inches off the ground. So you do the math. If a bear's standing there on all fours and he's about a foot higher than that barrel, he's a six-footer. He's six one. He might be five eleven, but he's right around there. I'm For size reference, I cheat. I bring in a tape measure and I cut a log exactly six foot, and I leave it at my bait out in the front in the clear area. And so there's a six foot reference on the ground. So if a bear walks up, you know exactly what six foot looks like because there's a log sitting right in front of him that's six foot long. So um, that's a quick, easy cheat to know if a bear is big or not. Um, One more thing on top of the stinky meat. Um, my beavers, a lot of people freeze them until season. I chuck them in a, in a Home Depot bucket, put a lid on them, and I leave them right next to my house. Uh, I've been lucky nothing's gotten into them, but uh, you'll see the, the bucket will swell up. I mean, that just that the stinkier, the better. So when I pop it off, it's foul. I've puked once. Um, <laughs> and yeah, it's nasty. So the stinkier you can get it, the better. Leave it in the sun. I mean, get that thing just rank. Um, and then the other thing on, on the sizing chart, I cheat when I kill a bear. So I'll turn a five and a half foot bear into six and a half. And when I measure it, that's what it there is. They call it a guide stretch. He does and I do. I'll be honest. Um, it feels good to say I shot an eight foot, seven foot bear. So two they, things. They do it on television all the time. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So the next question I had is... Everybody wants to shoot a big bear, and so the best way to shoot a big bear is to shoot a boar. But how do you tell the difference between a boar and a sow when they come into your bait? Hmm. I didn't take that long. Yeah, no kidding. I've, uh, <laughs> I've darted a, a lot of bears in my life. I worked on polar bears. I worked on every North American <laughs> species a bunch. And, um, I, I can say that I have been fooled a, a few times. It does happen. Uh, but. What I look for on a, a boar is their heads are blocky, they're not pointed, they're not smooth. The older boars look like somebody sometimes has beat them up with a two by four. And they, they have a chest, they've got big muscles. And if you're lucky and you have a really big one coming in, he's gonna walk like he's a big male, because he is, he owns the place. There's a different mannerism. The females don't behave the same way. They're, they are gonna have a hump and they're gonna be real strong too, but they're not gonna be anywhere near the same size of, of attitude, if you will, I think is how I want to. When they get older, past six or so, then it's, it's usually pretty easy. And I guess the best advice I could say is just take a lot of time looking at them. And don't, you know, don't rush the shot, whatever it is. Take a lot of time if you really are specific about wanting one or the other, because it'll be worth it to be able to figure it out. Yeah, that, and, and if you're looking to shoot the biggest bear that is in your area, their mannerisms tell a lot. I mean, if a bear comes in and he's looking left and right and he looks like a scared child, he's gonna be a smaller boar or a small female. So when you're sitting there and a bear comes in and he stumbles in and they, I call it the sway. I mean, their whole body just sways back and forth and they come in and they look at the bait they're going to eat. They're not looking left and right. They're not scared. That's the biggest boar in that area. Um, so that's usually what I look for if I'm looking to shoot the biggest boar. Yeah, that's a good point. And that's where your trail cameras come in too, right? So you're going to have all the bears, maybe not all the bears, but all the bears have been there since you've been there last, right? So you can identify bears. You know which bears to expect, right? So a bear comes in and, and maybe it's a, a five and a half foot bear. It's a good bear. But you have on the camera, you know, several nights in a row, you've got a six-foot bear. 
Yeah, I would say mannerisms does it for me more than anything. Um, if, for my perspective, um, if I'm in question, it's probably not as big as it looks. They always look bigger when you're sitting in the stand. So um, my best advice is if you're questioning if it's a big bear, sit back and watch it for a bit. Don't pull the trigger right away. Um, it's probably not as big as you think he is when you're sitting there. Bears are the probably yeah, absolutely worst. Um, they're the worst example of ground shrinkage for any species, in my opinion. <laughs> Other questions? Go ahead. So I'm from North Texas, and we don't have a lot of trees. So or hunting, bears. Uh, or bears. <laughs> my first year hunting here. Um, we do a lot of ground blight hunting. Is it tree stand hunting here or a bus with bears? Oh, I got a story for that. <laughs> yeah. I got a story for that. So my first time bear baiting, uh, the first time running my own station, I put a, a bear bait in, and I spent... I don't know, about a month laying on the ground in a sleeping bag, because as Trevor said, the more comfortable you are, the longer you stay there. And I slept a lot. And uh, so black bears were coming in, it was fun. I shot one, I was all excited. And then I saw the blockhead of a brown bear on my trail cam. And I realized real quick, I was gonna be a burrito uh, for that bear. So I actually switched to a tree stand. Uh, and I would say, if there's brown bears in the area, I'd go up high. It's and it's yeah, just safety in this area. It's an adrenaline rush if you're on the ground, which is a lot of fun. I like adrenaline, so if you're into that, I would do that as well. But I, I think just getting high up in a tree, uh, and, and I'd say at least 16 feet. As he was saying, he had a, a, a beaver at 12 feet, and the bear got to it. So the higher, the better. But if, if you're in for fun, too, I would do it on the ground. I, I'm not opposed to it. Uh -huh. And that is the, looks like the, the big uh, uh, push on all the outdoor shows. All the guys are hunting from ground blinds. And, really? Yeah, and, yeah. And, and I'm not as where, I mean, I'm not a fan of ground blinds. There's nothing wrong with them. They're easy, right? So you could change your location easy enough. Um, but my, my concern with them is, you know, I'm in the stand. I'm not actually worried about brown bears coming in. I'm more concerned about the sow who's had her first cub. I wouldn't want to be forced to have to shoot a mother bear, right, with a cub. And I just don't want to be put in that position. And, that, and again, it's a personal opinion, but I'm more concerned about a mom with her cubs. But ground blinds, if you try to leave it all season, you're not gonna have a ground blind left. I mean, bears are very curious animals and they're gonna chew it up and rip it to shreds if you leave like an actual <coughs> physical, like double bull type blind. And we do put up stands for behavioral observations and we have, we had one, the adult females with cubs was a real problem. We had one, we called her Huff Girl, because she, she knew you were there. They know you're there all the time. And I've had one female that did climb a tree, um, and I was in a helicopter, and she came after us. And so uh, the females with the new cubs are, they're real problematic.